Welcome back for part four of Battle Brothers. This has been the Oath Takers campaign. We've really gotten our way through the entire early game and we're now, I would say, onto like an intermediate company status. And by that I mean all of our guys have survived all of the early perils. We have a decently good sized company with well armored men. We've avoided any major danger. Um, our, actually, our items, this is decent prices here, but honestly, the food. Ooh, the food is really cheap here. Uh, we will do that. Anyway, I think we've pretty much come to the end of the micromanaging tactics part. And I kind of want to do like the best of or the highlights now. So I figure why go in for every combat and commentate every bit? I, I decided to just kind of take it off Twitch and here see the company through to more of its development. Because I generally don't like running these series more than maybe three or four videos. And we're on video number four here, so... This game just kind of ends whenever you say, bye. So I figure that this is a pretty decent place to stop it. So this will be their ultimate adventure here. We have a good harvest here. This is amazing. Anyway, these series are kind of meant because I just really like playing Battle Brothers. I don't know what else to say. I, it's, it's a great game. It's fantastic. It doesn't really make for very clean content in a well-edited video, I often think to myself. Although, I just like it so much, and there are a lot of people or a good number of people who really like the game. And I, I, I don't know, that is to say, if you've made it this far, I do appreciate you. Um, there's something about YouTube just still being able to kind of turn on, turning on a recording and just play a game through and just sit with it and experience it deeply, which is more fun to me than sometimes than, uh, you know, than editing a video together. Oftentimes one leads to the other, so like when I've got plenty of content and I enjoy the game a lot, then I'll come to that. But anyway, that is to say, that is to say, um, I kind of wanted to just see through the company to more of its development today. So I'm going to kind of cut around a lot of it. We'll go through some of the main quests, but then I'll skip to wherever there's a meaningful level up or a cool victory or something, rather than just positioning in battle. Count vote, vote, okay, so now we have noble quests. Uh, peasants are badgering me again. Are you willing to take care of this problem for me? There are goblins camping. Let's try to do some more adventurous combats here. Even if they aren't necessarily the smartest combats, like goblins, I think is kind of iffy, but still. Like, uh, southeast of Huffschlag. Wait a second, where is Huffschlag? Oh, they're way over there. Oh, we have to go out in the wilderness for this one. I say that we do it, though, because... The thing that I've I've learned this time is uh, just get the beasts and exploration DLC. I kind of wanted to go through more of the main game before I got any further, but I think I've experienced most of the enemies that the main game has to offer, aside from very strong, like, um, town enemies, which are extremely powerful. If you go against a town's army or something like that, you will get ripped apart. They will utterly destroy you. But uh, right now we've got goblins, so thumbtucks. Great name. Uh, goblin ambushers, but at night, honestly, this is better. We don't want to give them the opportunity to outrange us by a lot. Don't forget, too, on our oath that we're currently at, uh, we've got to rally our troops in order to... Is this based on... No, this isn't actually really based on anyone's... Like... Uh, morale that they have. Everyone here is breaking simply because of the oath that we've taken. You have to start off your men broken. I don't know what I think of this Oath Takers campaign. Some of the oaths were great. Some of them were kind of annoying. Um, hard to say. I like the fact that you start off with more geared up guys. Though I, I think that's always fun. I think that was worth it. Worth it for a good, fun, uh, good bit of fun on that. Definitely not like the start that I'm used to, but it was kind of tricky to build up a bunch of warriors that were like asymmetrically focused. Anyway, uh, we're going in against some goblins. What is this? Seven goblins? This is still an interesting enough combat though that I feel like this is very worth going into, you know? Okay, let's keep lowering this wavering. Now this isn't going to improve their confidence if they're already, you know, done wavering. But for right now, it works because they are wave. I've seen them just run away from very easy combats with this oath. It just makes the game. Yeah, I guess it's good for a challenge though if you've already mastered it. I just feel like that this was kind of a more advanced com campaign than where I was at in terms of learning the game. But I mean, even so, I would say that I'm 40 hours in, 
Actually, slightly over 40 hours now, and I'm still learning tons. It's like it, it doesn't really run out. Or it doesn't run out fast, certainly. Um, it's a good hangout over there. It's going to be so hard to get into this goblin area here. It's tricky, though, because they're usually ranged. The night time is really helping us here. They aim worse at night. Ooh, you are also ranged. Why would you get off the... Why would you do that? <laughs> what a horrible decision. Oh my gosh. Why would they do that? Stop. I think the thing that I enjoy most about this game, though, is the fact that you get attached to your actual units. Okay, yeah, your range is severely limited due to the night. Um, you can't really do anything from here. Okay, we're kind of stuck. They're just throwing stuff up at us, which is basically useless. But we are still wavering. We're in close proximity. Why would you go over there? Oh, for God's sake, why would you do that? The a AI is just making such horrible decisions in this fight. I, I think you definitely need this spot. And then just rain terror down on these two because of your really high combat ability. No, go for the guy up top, please. I'm sure it'll work out. Um, eh, pretty exposed looking heads here. But you gotta watch out though, because goblins can sneak up on you. I must just want to stay on the high ground and keep defending here. And they make like muttering sounds as you go throughout. Uh... Chat Gene PD. Why don't you go down to lower ground? Then shield wall though. Shield wall. Uh you on the other hand, Pimplomaticus, you can shoot some crossbow bolts here. But don't go much further, and the fact that this guy has made his way over to us, just draw back a bit. Good smart, honestly smart. I'm like rooting for the enemy now. Whoa, yeah, they are really squishy. Okay, head in there. Now, you. Uh, I guess just blow the horn. Blow the horn of confidence. Mm, you can't do that much, can you, unfortunately? Okay, then go into combat with this guy. Although I've kind of put you right up to the other dude. Okay, just keep inspiring confidence among the people. Nope. Yep, there's the knight for you, though. Uh, okay, rally everyone. Good. Confidence is rising. The wavering is ending. Good, good. Uh, and then you just walk up to him. Prevent him from doing any type of ranged attack. Okay, great, great. We've rushed them, we've rushed them. Uh, and then you go over here to see if we can just take down that guy's shield super fast. This is what I'm talking about, though, but this would be the more interesting part of this fight is the... Uh, the goblins' archers are usually nasty. I've seen them take down really strong warriors if they do it with enough of them. Just a bunch of scratches all at once. Uh, I'm going to wait for you because I need to take down that shield before I get in a worthwhile turn. And then let's have you walk up one and then take a 20. Okay, 20% chance, not bad. That is unfortunate. Okay, I'm going to remove that shield. Turn well done. 24% um, um, chance. I say we just try to take down this guy totally and, uh, hmm, that didn't work at all. Uh, never mind. Never mind. Ignore that I said that. Continue raising the confidence. If we raise the confidence enough here, then we get our uh, mission objective. You surround him. Where's the other fella? Uh, there you go. Hmm. Uh, getting bad luck here. Okay, go on to the high ground, and then... Yeah, this guy is fantastic. Uh, he was fantastic. Correction, he is not doing so fantastically well right now. Uh, okay, head in there. You have the arming sword. Great, now we've gotten them to retreat. Too many guys on this one guy, though. Just this pass was pretty well shapen. Hmm. Okay, 92%. Yeah, anything for taking out an archer right here. Okay, and then you just poop on that guy from up there. Metaphorically speaking. <laughs> hmm. Although I do believe that they made medieval armor that would allow one, you know, defecation. Hmm. 
This is, okay, we've got another tree stump here. You will never get across them, but look, we've inspired confidence in so many of our men here. I think that this has already been a worthwhile endeavor. Good. Very low chance. Okay, but it did get through that guy anyway. All right, now you just have to rush in. Take down their arches, prevent them from doing any type of indirect damage. Sometimes it's not even worth it to chase these guys, I feel, but... Okay, a little bit of confidence never hurt. Uh, you, as for you, reposition, go up, and then... Alright, nighttime isn't affecting us too much here. That's just our own bad aim. Good, more confidence has been inspired. We still need to get to 50, which was a huge ask. I think I'm just going to finish off these goblins and then get back out to the campaign map. Okay, we've had a run-in with some brigands, but unfortunately our banner carrier, Dimidomerus, has suffered a bad wound. He is a survivor, though, uh, but he has a weakened heart now. This was bound to happen at some point. I was just surprised that it was now. He got a series of, like, three arrows shot at him. Pretty rare, but... Uh, just bad luck here. It came out of nowhere. He was totally uninjured. Five or more brothers are temporary. Oh, well, I got an achievement for it. I guess that's the upside, but... Yeah, I mean, like... This morale thing didn't come with some liabilities. We've been wasting so much time in combat. Like, yeah, rally the troops, and then just everyone gets shot. You like to save it for the end, but it just doesn't really work out very well. Um... You are getting better with your crossbow. Anticipation. Being attacked with ranged weapons... Uh... Okay, so basically more ranged defense. I still think Overwhelm is good for these archers, just because it, like, shakes up the enemy before we get to them. And just having a good ranged squadron on our team does change things around quite a lot. Either that or Quick Hands is also good for him. Um... Although I'm finding that they tend to get to our Witch Hunter first most of the time. I will take Overwhelm nonetheless, just because I think it makes taking those random pot shots kind of worth it, even if they miss. Um, and other than that, just continue improving on these skills. We haven't really had a chance, though, to give them the range defense, though, like we have with the other brothers. So I figure, yeah, I mean, it was going to happen. That makes Jim Free pretty much the clear leader of this group, like... He has not sustained any major injuries, and now he has the final level of everything. Uh, killing Frenzy. A kill increases all damage by 25% for two turns. Does not stack, but another kill will reset the timer. That's crazy strong. Um, Headhunter. Berserk is also insane. Berserk and Killing Frenzy. They kind of go one and one. Indomitable skill. It's 50% damage reduction. Uh, basically, if you're in in trouble it, it does that could be like a lifesaver in certain situations but the goal is to never be in a situation where you're in danger mm. uh, triggering morale checks in the opponents that is pretty sweet all of this is good i think berserk is the skill that leads to all the rest though because it just causes him to go on a rampage uh, and we are getting into these real upper echelons of the um, melee attack here. So I'm willing to take it. And just seeing what just happened with our banner carrier, I'm like, uh, this guy is such a unit, though. He can practice. I mean, he dodges everything. And then if he somehow doesn't manage to dodge it, he still has this huge layer of armor that they have to get through. So he he basically does the work of, like, three brothers all at once just by standing on one side of the battlefield. Like, it's that felt. It's so cool to have one unit who's just super, super strong like that. Um, what else have we got here? I think we're just going to continue pretty much on our merry way about these villages. Uh, we've got... Oh, the 140. Uh, I don't want to get too many tools, but we do have to repair some. I think what we should... Ooh, hunting bow. Hang on a second. We have one bowman. I do believe in having one bowman. 30 to 50, worth 163. Uh, and this one does 40 to 60, 55%. This is better for practically everything. Range of seven tiles, range of seven tiles. Slightly more fatigue, but I think we're ready for it, no doubt. I mean, he's got... 76 G's. This is great. Okay, now we can start to toss aside these uh, these earlier bows. Light crossbow is... What do we have right now? Here's a regular crossbow. Okay, two regular crossbows. Hmm. 
probably just going on this north-south grind. We can't really fix any of our injuries in a temple, although there is one rare event that will fix a permanent injury, so it's not necessarily so permanent. But uh, it's like, do you... I guess it's worth it to try these guys out at this time. Vander the Tarnish. What is he? He's a bastard background. Still 1610 hiring price. There must be something good about him. And I want to check out Guntbert too. 222. These prices are looking pretty cheap to just try them out. So he has no negative traits. No positive traits, though, to speak of either. I guess we're just getting into whatever we get. He is an axe wielder. wonder if that is any, like, indicator on what he'll be capable of. Let's try him out. I could always use more frontliners. Um, especially guys who are just... Anybody who can take a hit. 12 out of 18. And that also gets us, I believe... No, we're still not even at max company size. I believe we can take on another... I think it's two? I want to say? But yeah, getting somebody with a hand axe, especially on the opposite side of the line from Captain Hook, the Eater of S.H.I.E.L.D., would be a help for our company. Also, who is stuck with only a sword? You were stuck with only a sword. I'm just going to get rid of this shield from this position for now. Okay, so you are honestly a decent frontliner. Not too bad. Not too shabby here. And he's got good attack stats. So this is a very high attack stat if you compare it with all of our other guys. Even though they've been leveling up and stuff. You know, level 6, 5, 6, 5. None of them has have as high an attack stat. You have 84 because you're one of the starting companions, but... 62 for level 2 is pretty freaking high to begin with. Uh, so, I mean, all we really need to focus on with this guy is his defenses. Other than that, yeah, I'll give him a little bit more initiative, because it's already good. But I think from here, we just give you Colossus, and honestly, you could take somebody else's armor. I, I'm gonna start trading out my old brothers for more expensive ones. And I know it sounds bad because we've kind of grown up with them, but some of these guys are just going to be straight up better. Uh, what else do we have? Now we're getting all arming swords as well. We have three arming swords in our company. Might even be more effective than... Yeah, 100% effective. 80, eh, so it's not really as good against armor. We'll leave some of these things as they are. Yeah, because our whole back line is dealing with armorless foes. Um... Almost tempted here just to cover our other flanks to do this. Keep you on the outside because you're just such a weight wherever you wind up. Uh, and as for you, you can keep your javelins on you, but... Yeah, take this arming sword instead. This company can do a lot of damage to armor. Um, or armorless foes. Yeah, still might need some solutions for armor, though. Could go with hatchets, but I just think that the tiers of weapons that we've found otherwise are too good to pass up. Though I will say that this this confidence this confidence mission has been such a like a weight on our company. Everybody needs we need to get kills in such succession that we're just it's wearing down our guys. I guess I could have healed at the temple. I still could. Maybe I will. Grazed neck. Yeah, let's just do this because we gotta get this stuff handled. Um, I'm going to pay to get all of our injuries healed before the next fight, because we just have to get this stuff done. I'd like to get this Renown in time, if we can. Get the next, uh... People are going missing. Okay, this is a totally fine mission. Uh, hunt down whatever... It doesn't matter how big the battle is, even smaller is fine, just as long as our men get confident during the mission. Hmm, everything is expensive here. Well, we could sell some stuff anyway. Okay. Sell some daggers, stuff like that. Hand axe. Uh, war, ooh, Warbrand could be worth repairing. All right, let's go ahead and chase down whatever is hunting the village, though. Um, and I will also just get one thing of tools, simply because although they're twice as expensive as they should be, uh, you know, we need them for getting back into combat. Uh, otherwise, we're going to lose our gear, and we don't want that at all. Uh, 90%, 90%, everybody is really down and out for this. You, I'm very concerned about, but your survivor trait should be helpful. You're missing, like, half of your HP, but you're not really going to do much battle anymore. You're, I mean, you're just the banner carrier now. I'm sorry, what I'm trying to say is that you're fired. I feel like I have to give this talk so much. 
Mm, this isn't good. We have to chase them down into the woods. We have so much ranged stuff, too. And it is becoming night. No, and they went directly back to the village. Okay, it is 14 Nox errors. Uh, I think we have a little bit of sunlight left, so I will take them out now, because I don't want to have to wait another 24 hours for this. Good, we didn't get night. It's a little bit dark out. Okay, but Nox errors, I'm pretty comfortable with fighting. We've got our abilities lined up. We didn't get any big ones, did we? The big ones are crazy. It I got swallowed by one yesterday when I was playing. I mean, it was totally fine in the end, but... Okay, just hold down this passage. Yeah, this is a 2v2 corridor right here. If we run you up here... And unfortunately, you can't do anything more than that, but... The axe guy is going to be pretty useless for this fight. I say we just get a lineup of... Yeah, spearman, axe man, and maybe a ranged guy back there. And otherwise, we could pick them off as they come and then shoot into their back line, too. Okay, you stand there, then. You can hang out more or less where you're at. I think that this long line right here is going to be useful for our bowman firing. Nobody's getting past him. All right, that was a fail. Uh, we will work on the confidence in a moment. Maybe a little bit right there. Okay, that's fine. You sound the horn. 30% I'll take. That's not bad. One thing I've noticed is, is sometimes it'll give me like 5% when somebody's in the midst of a bunch of enemies. And I think that just means it doesn't tell you, but there's a good chance it'll just hit another guy. Not like, oh, it's going to miss. There's just another guy there. All right, you go over here. Let's go ahead and see what these guys have to offer. Okay, we're about midway through combat. They've come around our flanks to both sides, but uh, really that's decent because we held down a strong center. We were able to get a, a good, like, morale check here, or we were able to blow the horn and prevent our guys from wavering due to their oath. I think that'll work if they start to get a few more kills here, but we've got to get in here. You stay in the center. And then just keep strong shields around the outside. Meanwhile, the bowmen are like the juicy core of our uh, of our formation here. But, I mean, when they do this, they can't, like, eat each other's corpses. So, I mean, I guess it's kind of an L for them. I, I don't really know what else to make of that, though. Uh, we can't move around here. Yeah, 3 AP cost just isn't going to work. Okay, other than that, though, yeah, it's just, like, pretty much shooting them. Like they walked right up to us. I mean, look, we're getting so much confidence here from the rest of this. Yeah, I mean, it's sweet when they when you do split up their formation, generally through shield wall, but you... Okay, this might be the biggest fight. I didn't expect them to flank this hard. Uh, really, they were kind of forced into this fight. Though, uh, if we could come around the side, we might want to start to think about position-shifting moves. How do you have only a 19% chance to hit? Distance of two. Maybe that's actually bad for him at that time? That could be. That could be. Right, otherwise... Fighting them here and then trying to step on their bodies. Um, though they, these ones can't really grow that much more, to be fair. I guess you will stay there. As for you... We need to reinforce that top line a little more. Oh, well. Okay, you're stuck, but there's not much else they're going to do with you. Um, I guess walking around at this point... Oh, there is one more in the back there. And then as for you, just keep blowing the horn, trying to get everyone... Prevent everyone from fleeing. That would be annoying. Okay, put up your shield and... No, there's just no stamina. This axe does require a lot of stamina to use... So, so it seems. Finish, finish, finish. Okay, and now more are coming out. Unexpected. Unexpected. But when they split up like this, it just becomes a lot of 1v1s. Most of our guys are pretty good at 1v1 combat now. Some of these guys are still codependent, though. Uh, slightly worried about you, but I think you have enough help. Hmm. 
If I move you two, you're not going to be able to get an attack, so let's just do this. Okay, thank you. <laughs> he's getting very good at combat, even if he isn't always good at avoiding damage. Um... Okay, you can just clean up this entire side yourself. I, you don't even need any help. Okay, I didn't know that that was a thing. The mid-sized ones can turn into giant ones? Well, I have learned a lot on this campaign. It has been very enlightening. Uh, that thing can eat a man whole. Which, he doesn't really die, he just sort of gets digested by it, so that, ironically, wouldn't be that bad. You're already in, in flight. Hmm. As for you, you're just fighting your own battle out here, aren't you? Anyway, uh, it's kind of an exciting moment. Actually, I'm not going to, I'm not going to change it here, this is too interesting. What is going on? Hmm. Yeah, I would classify this as one of those oaths that was just too distracting to be helpful for our company. Uh... Okay, you know what? Just prepare to counter. I can tell what's going to happen next. He's going to be swallowed. Continue using the horn. Maybe this will help somehow. As for you... Uh, we're going in a little too weak on all these guys. I guess get the big one. Yeah. That's all we can do. Alright. Counter work. I didn't even realize we were countering there. Okay, that was unexpected as a flight. You are definitely going to go right in for us, though. Mm. This is fine. Good. Uh, walk over there, uh, and that just requires so much AP that you totally give up your turn every single time. Um, hmm. Oh, actually, just walk one over and you could get a shot in. Nope. The forest floor is too dense. Yeah, there we go. He's been eaten again. Don't worry, he's fine. He's okay. He's totally fine in there. It's safe and warm. Uh, although I do think we have to get him out. The last time that this happened, I had to get the guy out. I think we did within about two turns. It is a concern. Don't get it twisted. These things are very elusive. Maybe we're just bad at combat. I've said that about practically everyone in the game. Probably we're just bad. Man. Man. How are you that elusive while digesting, though? <laughs> uh, God. Yeah, we've kind of been falling apart in combat a little bit. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. Yeah, you've got more combat skill, and you practically never miss. It must be it. Uh, I'll give him a horn if we can. Nope, that did nothing. Uh, oh, well. Walk over here. Walk over here in shame. Please stop evading. I want my friend back. Uh, once we get him out, it'll be glorious. Uh, I think you have to pursue them into the woods. I'm not even quite sure where they went. All right, try to chase those two. I don't want them getting away. If we can get any farm more confidence from this mission. I guess go for him. Uh, I mean, you can't fit another guy in you, so... Mm. Ah, friend! You've returned. You're breaking. <laughs> he would be so happy to get out of there, wouldn't he? Uh... Okay. I, I mean, I think that was the glorious part of the combat. I don't see anything else going horribly awry here, so we'll skip to the end. Call me crazy, but I've gone and fought orcs. I just figured we needed to get some type of confidence boost before everything ended on our event, and I'm crazy enough to go in here. Really not a good idea, but I figured, hey, we haven't gone against any wild enemies yet, let's just give it a shot. And then now I have a giant double-headed berserker coming- yeah, there we are, he's done. Uh, they like charge into you, they're really in a whole different class of enemy, but okay, this one is gravely wounded, already routed. This one has a chain with him. Jeez, just like whole different weapon classes, the likes of which we haven't even seen yet here. 
I don't really know what good this is going to do you. I think you should just take out your knife and attempt to stab right here. They don't have much armor, fortunately, and that is maybe the one positive going on for them here. Just raise your shield until help arrives. We've basically had perfect positioning against them, though. They can't do... It was always like a 2v1 anywhere we were around them. So it was really lucky, but we're at their base. So the chance there's a chance of getting great loot out of this if it does work out. Okay, you advance. Even if one man dies, just for like the bragging rights of we took out... Look, Carl had his helmet smashed. I haven't had that happen with anybody yet. Just stay away from them for the rest of this. All those squiggums I'm worried about. And I've not been for the entire campaign yet. Here, go ahead and just... Honestly, continue to inspire confidence in the men. I really would like the confidence bonus. <laughs> uh, why is this going to backfire horribly, I feel? I mean, we do have decent combat experience now. You're already running away. Could just go in on him. Ooh, that was a huge attack. Man, even running, they're still scary. These guys were, it's going, it's like going against all berserkers. Uh, okay, swap back out to the bow. Now this should be safe. This is the last one of, ooh, Jesus. Ooh, Jesus. You've got to go, man. 77%, man, even just isolated with these one, he's, this one, he's in trouble. Uh... Okay, I could get you to shield wall on your turn at the very least. Man, you're all you're running and everyone has already died around you. <laughs> all the enemies are dead. Do not be afraid. Uh, I'm not sure if it affects you anymore at your level. Okay. Oh wait, I was supposed to shield wall with him, wasn't I? Okay, he is dead. You are very dead. Gunbird is one that I just hired though too. <laughs> oh, I just hired him. It's fine. Oh god. Why? Fortunately, he's pretty far back in the turn order. Hmm, though I don't think the strong reinforcements... Most of the team did fine, though I don't think we'll get in there in time to save him. 14%. No, you could hit our dying wounded man. Oh no. Okay, yeah, he's not going... He's definitely not going to make it here. We could sound a horn before he dies. I think that did just bring him back in the turn order, though. Okay, now he's fleeing. It was kind of a lucky close call, honestly. Yeah, swords were the right move for this fight, though. Ironically, we didn't get any confidence from this fight. <laughs> this made us less confident fighting. Okay, maybe at the very end there we got confident. But only after there was nothing to be afraid of. So this is a Berserk Chain... Master Chain... To oh, Jesus. This thing could really do a lot of head splitter, head chopper. Yeah. Uh, well, what were we at before that fight? 34? Well, we got up to 37. Not much of a change there. Even the loot wasn't that good, but we did level up from it quite a bit. So, all right, we're going to desperately search for more levels before the time ends. Well, we didn't get the contract, but, you know, uh... I guess what I've done in this campaign is just figure out which contracts not to do, or which oaths not to do. But it, it is a trickier one, because, you know, like, you're supposed to you're supposed to be doing all of these different requirements, but some of them just have these drawbacks that are so self-defeating that it, it just doesn't even make sense to take them in the first place. Still, I mean, the whole company is alive. What I found is that it just caused me to put too many men's lives in danger and waste more money and stuff. Uh, I mean, our renown is good enough, and mostly what nobles want me to do is just, like, patrol more lands, and I don't see those quests as being as good for us. Although, that being said, I've taken out some beast lairs. Okay, we've got a couple more brigands here to go. Uh, this is kind of an interesting fight, actually. Topographically. If nothing else, this playthrough has fully convinced me that just having the high ground is the only thing that matters in this game. Uh, you... We'll take a real hit if you go here, but it will also probably win the fight if you just walk over here. Good, good. Uh, as for you... If they go beneath me, then they have to get underneath me, so then that's... I mean, obviously. But at the same time... 
Yeah, this looks solid. Maybe we'll move him one up more. Let's just wait. Okay, this is lots of brigands, so really kind of one of my preferred fights right here. Uh, if you got into the territory behind him, we aren't starting out fights under confident anymore, and thank God for that, because that was such an annoying thing to have to deal with. I, I really did waste a lot of their character development on that, too. Don't get it twisted. I just shouldn't have done that, I feel. Uh, you stay on the high ground. We've got ourselves into a fight with orcs. We have a, another oath to take out greenskins, so this was somewhat of a necessary fight. I guess it could have been avoided, but... I mean, it's pretty insane, this fight. We were going up against 10 orcs, just the 12 of us, which is, is a big ask, honestly. Somebody might not make it out of here alive, but still, if it gets us the contract, or if it fulfills the oath, that's good for the company, and that's good for hiring more men. You know, good for our flows. Uh, but we are getting more... Well, actually, confidence doesn't even make a difference anymore. It's just how many of them we can slay. I'd really rather be going up against goblins, but it came free with a mission that we were doing, so I figure leave it as it is. But it is an exciting combat. We've somehow managed to get most of them on the run, despite the fact that all of our arrows missed. We just managed to keep them in a swamp, which was like a big advantage for our company. Other than that, I mean, we our company is looking pretty strong, I, I gotta say. It's just that these are good enemies now, too. I bet you he's going down. They destroyed his shield, dude. They just walked up to him and just took his shield. It was intimidating. Honestly, somewhat emasculating. Uh, but, you know. Yeah. I really don't want to fight them in a fair fight at all, if possible. This one looks so insane. Uh, I mean, even Jim Free is pretty weak against these guys. They go straight in for your HP. Uh, okay, now it's basically just become a massive line, so you're going to have to walk up. We were getting such good pot shots. I mean, they were none of them were hitting, but they were well placed. Sadly. Who is near to death? Okay, you are wounded. We just want a positive... We want, a, we want like, a domino effect to take place here. You've still got a shield. Since you've got an axe, I'm going to go ahead and put you on that. Who has decent armor? You, you have decent armor. All that work in dodge, though, has paid off, because even with the good armor, it's still working. Swords are great against these guys, though. Okay, you are the only one I've managed to rout. Somehow. I don't even really deserve it. Okay, let's just try to get the domino effect going. I'm surprised that no one has died in this battle yet. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Don't get it twisted. Ooh. Elusive. Orcs are strong and fast and good. I'm surprised that didn't demoralize more of them. That was two for one. He also goes into a frenzy now when he gets a successful kill. Like, he can get two in one turn. Oh, I forgot that he was in the bushes. That's the one with the chain. You need to be really worried about the one with the chain. Maybe that's needless to say, because it's chain, but still. This isn't going to do anything to him. Okay. I don't have much of an option here. Wounded, near death, let's try to take out that one. That was demoralizing to them. That was a blow. How have Roland... <laughs> Roland has survived the longest... No, Roland... Oh god, oh god, no, he's going down, Gunpert. Well, Gunpert was pretty new. You just basically came out of nowhere, though. Oof. Oof. Uh, okay, dagger time, that's all I can really do. Oh, who do I save? Whose life do I save? I think you t you're definitely dead. Well, you're the next one in the turn succession. Maybe we can bring him down in the turn order if we manage to put a, a wound in on him. Doubt it, but I'll go for it. Okay, okay, that was demoralizing to the other fellow. Uh, you're pretty much just going to shield wall, so let's see. Nope, we can't even get the surround bonus here. Uh, you don't even have the energy to... Why can't you shield wall? Oh, builds up. You don't even have the fatigue left in you. Okay, just take one last swing. Oof. 
It's okay. He was just hired. He was a decent recruit. He had good prospects, but this is one of the toughest battles we've fought so far. I'm surprised they've even done this well. I would still stand by this being worth it because this would be 10 out of the 30 green skins that we were assigned to slay. Just that he survives is a miracle as well. Uh, okay, wait on your turn. And now we face the awkward task of getting all these guys... Ah, uh, whoops, I messed up there. All these guys from the south back up north. Okay, good. Confidence is growing, though. See, whoever is around Jim Free does well. It's that he needs to cut hard to one side in combat. Pretty much from the start. Might be a little too overpowered to have two strong uh, units. Roland, you've actually got decent HP. You've got a long ways to go. All right, I'm willing to go. And he's also got that double grip on his sword, too, which is making him uh, stronger. Okay. Uh, you have... You don't even have that much armor to begin with. Going in with the dagger. Hang on a second. Uh, you're next in turn order. Okay, good. Took him out. That was another threat. I'm actually going to move you back. Nah, just not happening. Uh, I'm worried about Havid University. Not hap- just not happening. Okay. Oh, you didn't have enough AP left. Alright, decent. Well, I mean, that's- mm, Okay, yeah, I will run them down to get that chain. That chain is pretty valuable. That that one's got in his hands. I guess end your turn. Keep trying to walk up. Keep trying to walk up. Uh, if you're on the run, though, you're not going to be too dangerous to us. Uh, okay, I guess try to stab him to death. Yeah, no, no, that's not working. Okay. He's a big guy. He is. He's a big guy. He's a big scared guy. Move in there, move in there, move in there. It is kind of exciting to beat an enemy that was objectively stronger than you. Like, 12 of us versus 10 of them. I know we outnumbered them, but just look at their weapons, man. Jeez, Louise. Uh, back to Mermacht. I do kind of want to stay up here because it's where the green skins tend to spawn, but... Uh, yeah, that was 10 out of 25. Oh, I stand corrected. We need only another 15 of them in order to finish this quest. So that is good money on that quest as well. Uh, what else is in this town? Collectors. Several collectors seeking exotic curios have made their way into town. There's good coin to be made. Uh, we don't unfortunately have any of that, but I bet you it's expensive. No, no, actually paper. Cloth rolls. Sorry, cloth rolls is pretty cheap. Uh, beer is also at a pretty affordable price affordable price point. Uh, whoops, I did not mean to sell that. Oh, God. This game really needs an undo button. Uh, it's good prices on goods, or at least decent, at least decent. Willing to sell these ones. I mean, these could be good weapons for us, but they seem unwieldy, just the amount of max fatigue that they build up for the most part. I did it again. I have a bad habit of doing that. Okay, silver bowls, that seems like something they would want, right? Furs, also, that's a great price on furs. See, we can replace men pretty fast if we lose them. What we need is a one really good recruit. Somebody as good as Jim Free for our company. Because we need that on the other flank. I stand by it. If we don't get that, we're going to keep falling apart. We just need somebody that they can focus fire on and we can keep getting them to taunt. At this point, we're coming into the end of a normal combat here in uh, our campaign as it was going. We were hunting down green skins, but unfortunately it was becoming pretty much impossible to find green skins. And I noticed that there have been more and more undead in the world. So I think we've actually come to what amounts to the end game crisis, uh, which appears to be like the zombie apocalypse. Uh, yeah, there's just tons of undead roaming around, and even right now, just fighting normal brigands, there's no necromancer, I checked. And, uh, yeah, they're just getting up and turning into zombies, which is actually kind of sweet. Like, I guess more and more towns will start to deal with just zombies marauding them from, uh, nearby, but... 
Yeah, like I never really made it this far in this game and I had intended this to be a learning run. Uh, although I feel like I've mastered the basics now. There's still, I mean, I know there's a lot that I'm not, hang on a second, uh, let's call this one over. I didn't really have anything that I'm looking for. Yeah, it's unfortunate though, because all I was able to find was undead in the surrounding lands. Some of my men are even getting sick, which kind of makes me worried, like, oh no, has it spread to us? I think it was just a random event, but yeah, one, two, and three, sick. Uh, so, really, uh... I don't know, I mean, are we even ready for it? Like, 90 days? Oath takers. Just a bunch of guys who left this religious order. Uh, and then, you know, under that guise of virtue, uh, making money. Find themselves situated in the zombie apocalypse. However, the one thing I'm just, I can't really shake the feeling of is that a lot of what happens in this part just becomes a grind. Uh, and, I mean, like, for the sake of, for the sake of the video, I would like to keep going, although it kind of requires, like, 20 hours worth of work. Okay, yeah, here we go, this is undead yeah just coming from pretty much all over man they are fast too i've seen nothing but undeads uh undead yeah just undead on the outer lying areas just kind of a nuisance really it's kind of sweet though like to see the end game crisis just a few other things I i've become aware of too is if you stand on top of a mountain you actually get a better look at the area around you maybe a lot of this is like Kind of obvious, but okay. Hang on a second. We gotta get another oath. Definitely don't want that. Slaying fifty foes. I mean, we would be able to do that. None of the men die during the oath. Okay. I mean, slaying foes. Basically, minus defense and use double-handed weapons. So basically, high risk. I think that this is okay if we're fighting undead. Actually, going right back there and fighting sixteen undead. What is this? Ooh, no, not Necro Savants. Okay, no, we do not want to fight that. So basically, use two-hand weapons. We're going to be down on defense for a little while. Weeder Gangers, Auxiliaries, and Legionaries. Didn't really have enough time to react there. But I guess that this is going to be our new kind of... Uh, ooh, look at this battlefield. This is kind of interesting. But I guess the end of this campaign is just going to take place in fighting zombies. Um, I actually do kind of like that. Or I think it's pretty sweet, although I just think it'll be a long crisis. What I'm probably going to do is just play some on my own and then just kind of like update as we go because, I don't know, I mean, I, I kind of envision the end of these being like having all of the cool gear and stuff at endgame, uh, but I just don't know if it's like, it seems to take another 10 or 20 hours worth of time and I'm just sort of like, ah, uh, there might be just a better start that would allow me to do it and sadly it's like, Ooh, there we go. Actually, a decent shot at that. Sadly, I just feel like it's something that I simply can't make interesting or engaging without making it like a 20-part series. And I know that a lot of people who get here would like that. Although, I, I'm just, like, finding myself kind of limited for time here. So, I don't know. I will try to do a best of if I get into any interesting battles. But then after that, I'll probably just end up calling it a day. I think the one thing that I, I'll say here, and this is probably the last time I was like, you know, in quotes, learning Battle Brothers. Uh, but yeah, like, I, I think I would go back in with the Warriors of the, or I would do Warriors of the North DLC. Uh, that would be big, just for thematic purposes. Another thing that occurs to me is just beasts and exploration would make this so much more interesting because you do start just fighting either undead or greenskins or eh, something like that. And I was looking into the Steam reviews and it was like, okay, yes, this is an amazing game, but those DLCs are somewhat necessary just because it becomes somewhat average. I had to figure out how to deal with the main game's enemies, though. So I'm happy with what this run for what it was, although it's like, eh... I would kind of want to do it a different way in the future. Hang on a second. We need to get you guys on high ground. This is actually a somewhat interesting fight. I wish that they were all this interesting. Um, but I'm going to start to be just a little bit more careless with my men because uh, I, I want to see who will survive in like really good pitched combat. It's kind of exciting anyway. I don't know. Like It is a sweet game. You know, you get so attached to all these little people. Uh, you don't have a shield. Why don't you have a shield? That's kind of bizarre. Actually, very few of these guys have shields. 
Finally, I was like, ah, maybe combat will get interesting. And now it actually has, oh my gosh, that was actually sweet. I guess because we're getting these attack bonuses. Or did you even have that or did you just get lucky? <laughs> maybe, maybe that was it. Uh, let's see. I don't want you to occupy too salient of a position or you could get surrounded. Let's just stand there. You, on the other hand, you are occupying low ground. Uh, let's go up a level or two. Yeah, let's get you back a bit. Go up a little more. Okay, there we go. Now I've got my archers on hills. This is what we were looking for the whole time. Um, I guess since we're... <laughs> Since our defenses are lowered, I'm tempted to just go in with straight offense here. Unfortunately, though, these enemies will not get up and down like the weeder, ga <laughs> weeder gangers. It makes me laugh every time that I say it. Uh, weeder gangers. Although these guys with the poles are insanely powerful. I've just begun to appreciate more of the enemy differences that I didn't... I simply didn't get far enough to understand the last time I played. I didn't get very far, too. I think we were killed by, like, Nox errors the last time. It wasn't even a very strong enemy, just something that could kind of sneak up on you if you weren't, like, coordinating properly. Okay, yeah, I guess we engulfed these guys. I will get you up on high, but you're still sick, and you're just pretty useless in combat. I'm trying to think of other things that have occurred to me this turn. I think we did a pretty good, good job avoiding permanent injuries, uh, and just basically throwing the lives of the weak in front of us, like... Um, which is somewhat necessary for this game. Hmm, will you be in danger? I mean, we will all be in danger no matter what happens, but here, let's try this. That worked surprisingly well. Okay, and we are out of initiative, but fortunately we will get it back for these guys. Uh, going for a head strike on this one because he's got the shield up. Cool, avoiding some of that. I do believe he's got the bonus, the head strikes, or, uh, yeah, even if they've got a shield. Uh, let's see. You get up on high ground, because high ground is just so big for archers. The other thing that's occurred to me this time, maybe it's because I got nostalgic for this game, because I was thinking about HeroScape, uh, which I've mentioned continuously. If you don't know HeroScape, or you didn't grow up with it, it was a game that was out when I was a kid, but it was a hex-based combat system. Very, very fun. A lot like this in some ways. Um, well, I suppose any hex based game. Anyway, it got me oddly nostalgic, that is to say. But, yeah. I mean, it occurs to me this time through just how big height advantage is, is an advantage in this game. Um, Oath Takers? Don't know if I'm that crazy about it. I like the fact that you started off with a good number of warriors, but... Some of the oaths were just really bizarre. I think it would be f more fun the second time through, knowing what not to take. Which I've had to, like, experiment and restart a little bit here. Um, actually, you weren't a very good target there. Why did I do that? No, you're in the way. Okay, we'll just shoot down on this guy. Oh, we do have a couple of weeder gangers here. Let's take them out so that we can get the extra kills. Uh, okay, here we go. But yeah, I mean, I guess the one thing that I, I somewhat regret here is I probably would have just played more of the game for myself a bit and then just, like, shown highlights, which used to be my old style of creating videos and I kind of like to get away from because it just ends up me summarizing things, but I'm kind of finding myself falling back into old habits and... I don't know, I, I guess what that is to say, it just... It takes, like, 12 or 20 hours to get in a decent feeling campaign in this and sometimes that's just... It's just a long time for a game. Very fun for, like, me or just a time waster. Jesus, okay, yeah, now I'm just being careless. But I've basically said I'm, like, giving up on this campaign anyway, so. Another thing that's occurred to me, though, is RNG is pretty crazy because I loaded up another save file, and the game just straight up gave me another, uh, like, Oath Taker Crusader. But it didn't happen in the next time I loaded up, so I was like, oh, that's weird. So there is a little bit more RNG than I thought, but... You know, seeing as I really enjoy the style of games like FTL and this, um, I do actually kind of enjoy that RNG, but yeah. I think that's where we're kind of stuck with this one. It's a beautiful game, just one that I, I find myself needing to wait time before I approach it again each time I play it. Uh, but it is sweet. 
And I do think that this game has the kind of longevity that like an FTL has where, you know, we'll do a VOD on it. And that game is 10 years old and it still is very, very replayable. Uh, and I, I think that this game will be very much like that. But yeah, I mean, I guess I'll look back at this VOD someday and just go like, uh, I didn't know what I was doing, but I like that. I don't know what it is. Yeah, it's just, it's the whole, in the whole spirit of like discovering new games, that is to say. Anyway, kind of a long rant, but yeah, I just felt like that it, it sort of deserved that. Because I feel as though that this campaign... Is, I mean, that is to say, it was a successful campaign, but Battle Brothers is one of those ones that you just sort of play until you put it down. Like, I suppose there is the end game, but it's kind of... It, it appears to be kind of forced on the rest of the game. It's sort of like, see how long you can survive, put it into the scoreboard, and then probably die horrifically. Uh... Which, if you watched on Twitch, yeah, I've, I've had to basically just, like, save scum several times because of horribly dumb mistakes I made against some bad enemies. But yeah, I've gotten to the point with this playthrough where I just sort of feel like, eh, it's okay. I just didn't want to die in stupid faceplant ways, so I'll gladly put it down here. I think we learned a little bit about the tactics, though, the weapon system, without just faceplanting too early on to make it worthless, so... Anyway, I, I think it is valid justification to lose a few company members now. Um, actually, beside that one death, did a pretty good job. We're, we're doing a better job in general. I know here and there, there have been a couple issues, but keeping everyone alive, which you really have to do in this game, if you expect to progress, like, by the game's intended systems, which is... Okay, you are just whimpering in fear every single time that I click on you. Just stay home, man. Stay home. Oh, wait, I shouldn't have put you there. Yeah, he's gonna... Yep. Yeah, that happened. Uh, let's see what else is there to say. Other things... I think I learned enough in this playthrough that I'll take with me, though, to future playthroughs. So let's go ahead and... I'll see if I can get a little bit more progress, though, here. If there's anything quick and interesting, then I'll, I'll take it. But otherwise, I'm not getting my hopes up. Uh, you were a new hire, it's alright. Okay, we have taken a final contract. This is a 4,230 crown contract, which is insanely high. And I'm just genuinely curious, because now we've progressed further in the game. I'm probably going to have to hire a very expensive character in order to do this. Uh, but it just seems like a worthwhile endeavor. This is the type of thing I've looked for, because it does start to feel like just running errands for people after a while. This is kind of how I've wanted the game to progress, but uh, I mean, we can hire a couple better soldiers from here. Erwin the Swift, he was a squire. Geralt, also a squire. And then they're both named Geralt. Okay, two guys named Geralt. Let's go ahead and try them out. See if they're any good. Okay, you have no real drawbacks. Hank the Worm. Disowned Noble. Hartbert, he's probably overpaid then. You are swift. Okay, that's great. I'll take it. And then the other guy named Geralt. Try out. Make sure he's got nothing crazy about him. Greedy. Uh, and night blind. Actually, this guy turns out to be not such a great hire. What about Hartbert, the disowned noble? Ailing. Uh, oh, he's a weasel, though. And he's got the extra level. Although he just kind of requires more pay. What about Adelmar, the militiaman? I like him. I like him. He's got some sort of quick. Okay, I'll take that. See, it's not always the price that tells you because this guy is kind of overpaid. Ailing? Don't like it. Sometimes you can tell visually if they're going to have problems. Let's also hire some warhounds because I don't think I've done a lot of that. Uh, but they are really sweet in battle. Is this place paying? It's playing... It's paying decently for armor. I just want to be able to pay my men until we get there. <laughs> Um, oh gosh, I can't even have you all in battle. Uh, Dimidomerus, I'm kind of tempted to just leave behind. He's gotten worse ever since he had that permanent injury. You know, I really can't do that much with some of these guys, though. Now it occurs to me. Why did I even hire you in the first place? Uh, let's see. 42 versus 39. Yeah, honestly, my company is pretty good now. I don't, I don't know why I did that. Oh, that was a waste. Uh, anyway, I mean, they will be better eventually, right? 102 HP, jeez. Oh, but you have brain damage. 
Oh, this was Carl from before. Yeah, well, I mean, he has fantastic HP. Considering the brain damage, otherwise, doing really well. Doing really well. Let's go ahead and give everybody a dog in the front line, because this next quest is going to be ridiculously difficult and might be, like, our end game. I've kind of sought out my own boss fight, you know? Something to really test our company's limits. Uh, 50, let's see, 95, I'll take it. Uh, I don't really have a better shield for you. Wear this ancient helmet. We'll see how you do with that. Uh, and... About all I have for you. Sorry. Good luck. Good luck. Let's see what we're going up against. Uh, what else can I give to you? I say we just go back and buy more dogs. Let's give people a little bit of a level up as well. Um, you are a ranger. We will increase your ranged skill and also your defenses, because why not? Then we will go in with perks. Everybody's pretty well developed here. I'll give him overwhelm. I've liked this for archers, even if they miss. Just helpful for kind of cutting down your enemies. Excuse me. Uh, Alvar. Uh, you are brave and resolute, although I'm mainly depending on you for your ranged skill. Uh... And we'll just do the defenses normally. I'm kind of coming into my own version of endgame here. Uh, we will also... Yeah, let's just give you more level ups. Just as much combat skill as we can get here. We've still got to take down... I would say it's another 50 enemies. Uh, or 40 enemies now, probably. Man, your melee skills are really getting good. Not to say that I, I really enjoyed these characters, too. Although I think it's just, it's partly like the game loop that does it in for me. Here we go, another level up. Uh, here we go. Mm. Okay, I'll give you the initiative. Maybe I'll get a, a lucky hit here or there. Uh, as for you, I will give you the sword mastery because you've been using it right now. That works. Everyone else hopefully will recover over the next couple of days. Uh, let's go ahead and grab maybe another dog or two. Oh no, we've sold the helmets to the dog place. Uh, let's just grab a ton of war dogs. I've wanted to do this more or less since the beginning. Okay, you have a dog, you have a dog, and you get a you get a war dog. Uh, just overwhelm my enemy with dogs. I don't know, it's the YouTuber in me that really wants to just make it a giant spectacle. I'm sorry, I just really want it to be. Like, you want to have an exciting combat, but it does take about, I don't know, 40 or 50 rounds in order to get to that. I've done a little bit of rotation for some of their skills, although I think for him... Offhand carrying a throwable tool, uh, no. Killing Frenzy. I think Killing Frenzy, because basically if Jim Free goes on a rampage, he, he just does not stop, and it's great. Uh... I don't want you to waste your AP on a war dog, really, though. You have the skull of young Anselm. I don't really want you wasting your turn. Eh, you can waste one, because you don't really tend to get a lot of hits with this bow. Let's just get the other three dogs, too. Everyone gets a dog. I genuinely want to see what happens in this. This is going to be a 4,300 debt. We're using all of the contract money to just buy everyone a dog on our team. I'm being very wasteful, but it'll also just be fun, and I mean in the name of just doing it in a wild way. Okay. I like, this is what it's all been for, anyway. Just the moment when you can just throw caution to the wind. Leave it all behind. We do need a little bit more food. We do need some food here. Here, I'll go ahead and sell all of the useless junk I'm not using anymore. Uh, eh, I want to keep one shield in reserve. Sell that. I know this isn't a great place to sell, but, uh, whatever. Like I said, throwing caution to the wind at this point. Alright, uh, hmm. Give me some very expensive goat cheese and I will be on my way. And a couple of tools as well. Alright, uh, I believe that's it. Retrieve the artifact from the lost castle of the Doom to the east. This is the kind of quest I've been waiting for. All right, Brigand Hunters. This is good because it'll give us some time to recover as well. Uh, do not encounter them. Although now it is kind of interesting that people will just get up and, you know, be zombified if we fight them. 
Uh, are we going to get any fog of war clear out? Not necessarily from this mountaintop. I wonder if day and night affects that too. Not as far as I know. Artifact from the lost castle of the doomed. This is more like it. Um, that doesn't look like the lost castle of the doomed. You kind of make out some of the tree line there. No, I, that is just me seeing things. All right, I will return when I find the lost castle of the doomed. Oh, they don't call it the Lost Castle of the Doomed for nothing. I mean, it was way, way the hell out here. So I, I guess we're finally arriving. I didn't even see this thing on my map. We just went into the fog. Like, full of... I had to sell everyone's clothes, and I'm probably going to have everyone desert before the end, but I'm kind of self-ordaining this as my final quest because we make 4,300 gold if we get back. And, you know, I just think it would be the... Black monolith. There is cool stuff in this game if you go out to the other side of the map where you're not allowed. But okay. Castle of the Dune. Schmastle of the Schmoomed. Battletoads going to the Forbidden. Okay, and we are fighting Necros events. Uh, we are all dead. We are all immediately dead. Do we even get to. We do get to go in formation. Uh, but these things will kill us. I guarantee you. They will kill Jim Free and everyone with us. Uh, and we're fighting them at night, too, just to make matters worse, like in the dark. But I don't know, it seems like a cool... Wait a minute, I accidentally left you in combat with no weapon. Oh, God, in my attempts to do a cool thing, I've accidentally just ruined the entire playthrough. It's okay, though, because I have 15 dogs that I used by not paying my men to get this done. Uh, arguably, I should wait for the Necro Savants to spawn before I bring out the dogs, but let's just do it anyway because it will look cool. I'm doing this... <laughs> I'm doing this entirely for the look. Uh, beautiful. Anyway, I did want to get some sort of climactic end, so this is kind of nice. Man! Eight or ten dogs. There's only two Necro Savants, so this is actually not that bad a quest. It's more just annoying to get out here. I should have fired everyone to begin with. Oh no, the dogs are retreating. We need to rally the dogs with our horns or something. Honestly, this fight is looking pretty easy now. We could probably just run up to them and kill them. Pole arms and everything else. There is practically no topography to this map after all. Hmm. Okay, but Necro Savants are one of the enemies that I... Ooh, yeah, they do that. They're not really zombies. They're more like vampires. Okay, now it's time to go in and get revenge for the dog. I actually did care about them, despite the fact that I just let them loose and threw them at the danger. You know, they mattered. They mattered in their own way to the story. Uh, let's go ahead and release one more over there, and then you will head up forward. I don't think that this... I mean, someone will die. But this will at least be a decent ultimate fight. Uh, hang on a second. Go over here. Although this Necro Savant is just going to relocate in a second and be weird. They are weird like that. Man, not really that many AP to release a dog. Basically just a free attack, a distraction to the enemy to let you reposition. Okay, you know what? Why not? Just go in with your fists, Geralt. It's too bad he was a good fighter, but, you know, we'll see what he can do. I don't think we did this. The total unarmed playthrough. Going in entirely with brawlers, which honestly gives me some ideas for a future challenge playthrough, but uh, I'll let that kind of speak for itself. Um, you have a shield. I'm not going for you. I'm not going to waste my time there. I'll just go for this one. Assuming that this Necro Savant does stay in the same place. Come on, the dogs could use a little bit of a morale boost right here, honestly. Uh, nice fields, though, to have this fight on. It's too bad everyone will probably desert after the fight. Okay, getting in some decent bites here. Getting in some decent bites. I don't know what I... What, what do I think of the undead invasion... Not that bad, although I, I'll just say that the one thing I don't like about the vanilla game starts is they, they do tend to start to feel kind of samey, but, you know, when I throw in a couple of other expansions, I feel like that will solve a lot of the problems that I have. See, that is a little unfair, that they could just disappear, but, you know, I, I still stand by it. I think that's why they're one of the strongest enemies in the game. 
Anyway, we'll head out here. Oh, you do have a dog with you. Okay, let the dog out. There we go. Oh, God. Didn't expect that. All the way over there. Uh, you can go for... <sighs> don't want to hit the dog. No. You can release the dog, but don't hit it. There we are. Good. All right. Hey, yeah, these turn out to be not so bad. Now, I went up against four or five Necro Savants at one of the times when I face planted. Not very fun. And my company was off center too. They were just all over the place in formation. Very, very bad. Do not do that. Like if you think that two of those, th I'm just going to approach you with my fists. <laughs> Why not? I mean, just try things. This is the beauty of failing it though. Anyway, this is why I save it all for the end. You learn the most. You learn the most in these instances. Do not approach weaponless. Why would you be that afraid? You're already dead, wouldn't you? All right, I can live with that. Um, it's not really any use chasing around the Necro Savants. I could send you off this side though so that you guys don't get flanked over there. I think this is fine. This is fine. Yep. You, on the other hand, They've all lined up just because I had so many dogs in the fight. All right, very well, I'll go with that. Mm, we really need some of these dogs to clear out now, though. All right, I guess we'll send you over there. Not many other options here. This is going to be very difficult even to hit the Necro Savant. He's probably just going to insta-die. Nope. Yeah, they're going for our rangers. Probably you will too. Nope, going for the dogs, surprisingly. Put up a decent fight there, though, but keep in mind, that was like seven dogs that I just threw at these guys. These are some tough enemies. Mainly they're getting shields, sadly. Even an armored dog. Wow. Ooh, now you're on frenzy. There we go, three swings. I mean, overall, I would say that the, the main characters in the Oath Takers campaign, the ones that you start with, are great, but it, I don't feel like it causes me to change my playthrough enough. But I mean, it's a free DLC. I'm not, I'm not like, complaining. I'm just kind of... Think about, after, like, kind of an after-action report. What would I have changed? All right, hopefully... Nope. Didn't work. Punching. What if you get, like, more AP for punching? Just pummel someone, for, like, just surround them with a bunch of weak brawlers and beggars that you've located. Uh, this game is just class warfare. Okay, uh, yeah, I'll go for you. You don't have a shield left. Oof. Jeez. I've gotten a lot more careless in these last few fights, but... I don't know. I mean, the one thing that I'll say throughout the game is... Sometimes I do feel like I'm, I'm walking on eggshells the whole time, and it will be nice to it will be nice to try some like more violent strategies in a future run. Maybe what I could try for future ones because I do like this game a lot, but sometimes I wish that it gave maybe a little bit more instant maybe a little bit more instant gratification. Um, maybe try like some type of challenge run. Yeah, that'd be. Yeah, all brawlers, unarmed. Just give them a lot of armor and give th make them really good at dodge. Basically, go the full orc mode. Some of the orc powers, speaking of which, are, are pretty insane. Okay, he always goes for isolated enemy uh, allies. Uh, just surrounding them. Wow, you actually... Why would you do that? <laughs> That was not smart. Okay, I take everything back about the Necro Savants. They're just kind of messing around. Uh, oh, there we go. Good. Now we've built up confidence. I will say, though, that your your frontliner in the Oath Takers is a, is a unit. That This is probably one of my favorite characters I've ever fielded. You always wait the whole game to get a character that good, and to get one right off the bat like that is just really rewarding. And I, I do think that this was a great campaign for that reason. Um, oh, are we bleeding? I'm just going to wait for the Necro Savants to come back to me. Why bother going after them, right? Here we go. Okay, missed him for the guy behind him. Uh, 
Oh well. You're sick and useless now. But yeah, if you lose one character, like, he got pretty badly messed up. Ooh, I should have taken out the weapon with him. I'm going a little fast now. It's okay, I'm gonna, it means fewer men to pay on the way back and fewer men that will desert. It's just impossible to hit the Necro Savants. Although, that being said, I think I've encountered most of the enemies in the base game now. You know, most of the common ones, aside from really big ones. So, as long as you can get started on a decent foot, then we'll fight giant Krakens or something like that. Man, I can't wait. That'll actually be pretty sweet. You know, I, the other enemies that it occurred to me this time, though, that I like are, like, the Nox Errors. Oh, no, there we go. Like, when they swallow one of your men and don't just do something that's... That is a bad thing, but it doesn't destroy the entire playthrough. And that's the kind of enemy that I think is, is more interesting to fight against. Which is why I like them. And, you know, you figure them out gradually as you go up against them. Uh, ancient Auxiliary, here we go. You go in here. But yeah, I mean, that being said, like, slightly noob noobish rant. Actually, very noobish rant about the game. But I find that a lot of the games that are worth playing on my on my channel that I've covered over the years, that I actually get long-term enjoyment out of, do require this big upfront investment of time and learning to get into. Like, RimWorld, a very frustrating game when you first play it. But if you give it a lot of time to learn it, it is extremely fun, and you understand it at a very deep level. Uh, so I'll say that about it um, for all the for all the complaints I've had, <laughs> because it is extremely difficult, and that is in a lot of reviews. Like, hey, this isn't everybody's cup of tea, which is true. All right, here we go. I think we should be able to get these auxiliaries, but only the strongest will survive. Probably only some of our original party members. Auxiliaries, too, are tougher than I really remembered them being. Although I think I now get the whole what works against armor versus non-armor. And there are a lot of guides of meta builds, positioning, how to make sure that you always have a guy... Oops. Who... We really didn't do it this time because I was coming back to it, but... I feel like a lot of it stay stuck with me and stayed with me because I did have a lot of horrible face plants this time. Oh, no. I wonder who will survive this one. Even you are going to have a tough time hitting this guy. Oh, nice. Okay, we can have you reload and get... Nope. That did not work. All right, go ahead and take out your dagger. Oh, all right, I gave you a spear. I forgot about that. You finish him off. Be a good distraction now. Be a good distraction. Oh, no, you're bleeding. Very horrible. Very horrible. Some of these things just crumble super fast, though, too. Yeah, but getting a good variety, I would say maybe three or four guys is a good start. Jim Free and Dimidomerus. Dimidomerus didn't really do well in this playthrough, but in one of the playthroughs where I tested this run before I played it, he was way better in combat. He was way more dodgy and, like, elusive. This rendition of this character, because you always get a similar version to that, is not as dodgy. And I didn't really put as much effort into that one, but he just wasn't as good this time. Oh god, my own people are being zombified. He's definitely not coming back then. It was just a flesh wound, sir. Oh no, Havard University actually did like you a lot as a character. Although I am thematically closing this after this fight. Oh no. Um, why are you standing next to him if you're so afraid of him? Oh god, we spend all the time just catching up to the Necro Savants. Uh, they're going to isolate our men and kill them one by one, I feel like. Oh god, this feels horrible having to kill my own men. It also feels kind of good, though. Ah, you have no, he's facing the other way. Who could have thought it would have ended like this? Another Necro Savant. The dogs, though, I think were actually an oddly effective strategy because they threw the Necro Savants off as much as the Necro Savants usually throw us off. So, fire with fire, I guess. Okay, and you died. Naturally, the Necro Savants are the only two that survive at the end of combat, and we haven't encountered them until now, but these are one of the most dreaded enemies in the main game. As you can probably see why. Now they're cornering. Why are you even. Oh, no. There we go. Auxiliary over there. 
but yeah, they, they really isolate you. We got to get back into formation. We loosened up way too much after that. We blob my men together. Put somebody squishy on the middle. I guess they can't get to the creamy core of your formation if you just stick together. I'm not really doing it again, but... At this point, I'm just being very liberal with my uh, disregard for human life in the campaign. If we manage to kill the Necro Savants, I will think of that as the final boss and feel justified. I always need to create sort of my own win condition in these games. Otherwise, I'll just walk away always feeling like sad that we didn't just ascend. But yeah. Okay, here they come. And they're fast. Then you go up in bats. When I first encountered these things, I thought they were just regular zombies. Ooh, zombie dogs, maybe? No, sadly no. Oh, that's a real bummer. Thematically, that would have been totally appropriate. Man, we might even keep some of the war dogs. Uh, all right, stab, stab. Which one do we go for even? This one's unarmed. Let's gang up on them one by one. Okay. There goes another one. Uh, do you, no, you do not have a shield. You just have some sort of Egyptian looking weapon. What is that anyway? Honestly, it looks like, it looks just like a sickle. Some sort of farm tool. Ugh, now you're bringing back more of my, oh no, he didn't ever have a weapon. <laughs> you see, you see how my tactics work. I, I leave my men disarmed so that when they turn against me, we are stronger. Man, these dogs are super aggressive against these things. Yeah, dogs, the right move for a Necro Savant battle. Save those dogs. I have found a few emergency stops that I could pull this time. Uh, you can probably get... No, you, this won't be the finishing blow, but... Someone will. Jeez. It's crazy that these things don't even have armor. All right, there we go. And this will be very anticlimactic if you get this hit. Uh, going for the dogs, going for the dogs. Take out one of our own is the last. Okay, you can definitely get this hit. No, but even still, it didn't work. Ooh. Yeah, then everybody's got to use up all their fatigue and AP just to get to them again. Try, ah, uh, no, that didn't work either. Yeah, we spend all of our AP just getting back to them. That is a nasty enemy. Basically just takes everything that this game, th or that makes this game mechanically difficult and then just throws it in your face. Oh man, now they're, oh. I wonder whether that's, I don't think they're doing any necromancing. I just have to chase this guy every single turn, jeez. Okay, move one over. Then take him out. Okay, that's the final Necro Savant. Now it's just taking out our own men who have been resurrected. This is a horrible fight. One of the worst fights we've had, but... I mean, definitely not even worth 4,000 gold. <laughs> like, worth way more than that. They just caused, made me go to an undead palace. Uh, or, like, whatever it was. An undead fortress. But I digress, yeah. Anyway, like, a sweet game with very varied enemies. The one thing, though, that I think kind of kills the playthrough for me is a lot of the early game missions just amount to kind of running errands for people, so I would like to kind of cut down on that. Um, just, you know, as a video creator, to make these playthroughs pretty interesting. I feel like Battle Brothers is one of those games that I like to play, but it, it is very, very difficult to make this game interesting without spending like 40 hours on it in the background. So, you know, TBD for the future, but I'm happy with what it was. Well, surprisingly, I mean, these guys came back as zombies, so I'm not surprised about that. We came out with only a little bit of brain damage uh, silverware, and now everyone is going to abandon me. <laughs> right, let's just see what happens since we had to go out this far. I honestly had never even done a quest this far out, so that's the first time. Oh, and what is this? Oh, and then there's also another. God, this is totally not even worth 4,000. 
And the other thing that this has solidified to me is that all of the towny quests just pay horrible money. Maybe aside from the caravans because they feed you. But, um, oh look, we somehow have money back. I will still declare it as an ending there. Everyone's upset. These guys, I had to sell their clothes so that we could afford to go out on this expedition in the wilderness. But yeah, anyway, I don't know. I wanted to experience some new things. I really wanted to play Battle Brothers. Um, though I think we did okay. We face-planted a few times. Uh, and I wanted some type of exciting boss fight, despite the fact that a lot of it does just amount to grinding. Anyway, a great game. Uh, but one that I think the next time we'll go back to, I'll, I'll do all the revisions, like I said. Uh, who knows whether it'll be, maybe it'll be this winter, or maybe it'll be, I don't know, maybe I'll return in a while from now. Uh, seeing Italics do it on Twitch always makes me want to return to this game. Uh, because it is one of those deep and interesting simulations. Anyway, though, I think... Negative 191 crowns. I was hoping that someone would desert me climactically. I guess let's see if anyone does desert before we get back to town. And then we'll call it there. Nope, just a very upset company where we're in debt. And a bunch of people... We owe a bunch of people money, and then we have to let everyone go. Nope, no one deserted. Okay, well then I will do the... <laughs> Did not get paid, everyone died. And now I'm firing you all. I'm not going to pay them their compensation either. Is everyone upset because I didn't pay him his compensation too? Technically, you who are the um, you who are the party manager, you are not one of the ones in combat. But that doesn't seem to upset anyone else. You you are going to unionize against me? Dismissed. Okay, so they are upset that I dismissed him. Man, they need really demand big compensation packages. I'm going to dismiss everyone. And then just see what happens. Oh, you do get their gear back. Right, what happens if you just dismiss your entire... Nope, everyone's fired. I'm just making off with the remaining funds. All right, and Jim... Oh, you can't actually dismiss the last one. That is a shame. Anyway, Battle Brothers. I never know where to end this game besides us all just being horribly slaughtered, which unfortunately it didn't happen. Fortunately, unfortunately, but... I don't know, we did a pretty sweet quest. We went across the map and... Uh, whoops. I think I'll call it there. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, I do hope you enjoyed. Uh, I think the next time we will be going in with some more of the DLCs, so a little bit more. Let me know also, too, if you guys have any suggestions. Uh, I know this, this is like the first Battle Brothers playthrough in a while. Uh, there was a lot I forgot about, but yeah, a lot I learned and will bring with us for the next time. And if you haven't played it before, I do hope this helped you discover this game, as a lot of people had told me they were checking it out. But yeah, I think that's about it. Anyway, yeah. Until next time.